I would like to share with you the most ignored prayer. Say with me, the most ignored prayer. Now, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to check from verses 9 to 13. And I'm going to talk about the most ignored prayer. This is very important that I share with you this message. The most ignored prayer. All right? The Bible says, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Now, the word manner is the word fashion. After this manner, in this fashion, pray ye. So there is a fashion that Jesus Christ gave us to pray in that fashion. Um, okay, now let's go back to scripture. Now give me NIV. In NIV, the Bible says, This then is how you should pray. As simple as that. This then is how you should pray. Mm. So I can pray, I can pray, you can pray, but he says this is how prayer is ought to be. Ah, you see. Now that's a problem there. This then is how you should do what? I want you to hear very importantly. This is how you should pray. How should we pray? Then this is the most ignored prayer in the world. And or people memorized in, in, in Sunday schools when they were young, in schools, in homes. But it is not for that. This is how we ought to pray. Now how should we pray? Then the Bible says, he says, uh, verse uh, 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 9. This is how you should pray. He says, our Father in heaven. How Lord be your name. So the first thing you realize in prayer is the importance of realizing the name. Okay, let's go ahead. That's not part of the, uh, uh, let's go verse 10. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Just ask a neighbor, if you have a neighbor around you, ask a neighbor that events around you, ask them, just say these words. If you have, if you have a neighbor around you, just ask that neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. The, events the events happening around you, is it in the same way, how events are happening in heaven about you? Can you imagine Gideon? He was on earth, and he looks at himself as the most wickiest man. An angel comes and says, you mighty man of valor. So, so on earth, he was the wickiest. In heaven, he was a mighty man. It is possible. You can be sick on earth. In heaven, considered healed. Um, you can be poor on earth. In heaven, a billionaire. So Jesus says, when you make a prayer, let these things which you are in heaven begin to manifest. Uh, did you hear that? Yes. But this is the most ignored prayer. Now, 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 I want to show you something here uh, quickly. Let's, let's go ahead. Uh, that's none of my message tonight. Your kingdom come. We can talk about kingdom there uh, for a long time and we can speak about it, but that's not my message tonight. It says, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's not my message tonight. Verse 11. Then it says, give us today our daily bread. 
These are the most ignored prayers. How many people pray for provision? That word daily bread is the word for provision. How many make a prayer that God, I pray for provision? Let's go ahead. Now, there is a verse we're going to. And forgive us our debts as we also forgive in our debtors. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody came to me and he said, oh, I have so much debts. I have so, I said, how much do you have? He said, oh, it's a lot of money. Um, it's about $1 million. And I don't even know where to get the money to pay. I just don't know. I, I said, do you have anybody? Do you have somebody who owes you? He said, yes. I said, how much? He said, ah, it's not a lot. Like $200. I said, call the person now and they say that I've forgiven you this debt. The person looked at me. He said, huh? I said, do it. He said, as what we do is what he would do for us. So he took his phone and he made a call. I said, another person? He said, yeah. $1,000. I said, call the person. Tell them that I forget about it. Took the phone. And that one, he was reluctant. On the 1000 one, he was a bit reluctant. I said, call the person. He kept on saying, oh, ah, the number. The number of the person is not going there. I said, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. how can the number not go through? You haven't even tried it. Can you imagine? You have not even tried calling the number. How can it not go through? I said, call the guy. He said, uh, hello. <laughs> Can you imagine from an hour ago calling, wait, wait, when are you giving me money? To, uh, it's okay. You can keep it. It only took three weeks when he got an email that thanks for loan payment. Wow. The guy never paid. He has no money. And he saw the, the guy flew back. It was in February. Uh, it was in February. The guy flew back to Malawi to say, hey, hey, what happened? He said, no, Papa, Papa, I want to forgive you. I said, no, 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 no. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I didn't mean now. <laughs> but what we do for others is what we should expect God to do for us. Have you noticed we are so good in when we are under pressure? Feeling like can just that person just forgive me? Can he, can they just say, can the bank just say, oh, it's okay, you can give the money. But you don't want to do that to other people. Now, now, watch this. Watch this. So Jesus says, are you here, right? Jesus says, forgive. When you make prayer, forgive. All right? Our debts. Now, when you check there, the word dirt, when you go into the King James Version, we are dealing here with the sin. There are particular sins which you owe God an apology. Now, you didn't hear me. And you may actually be staying and living, but you owe God an apology. In the spirit, you have got a debt. Oh, did you hear what I'm saying? You have what? You have a debt. So he says, now, there are people also who have wronged you before. And you can't forgive them. It is impossible for God to forgive somebody who does not forgive somebody. Now, we have prayer points. Most of the prayer points we do is, God, I pray for financial breakthrough. Oh, Lord, come on. There's a prayer that is commonly ignored. A prayer that must make you realize that I need us to let it go. Somebody who wronged me. Somebody who did something wrong. Let's go ahead. We almost get the verse I'm looking for. Where I'll be. And do not lead us into temptation. Hallelujah. Do not lead us. Have you noticed that, that word temptation there 
it is not the same word temptation which the devil uses. Because God does not tempt anybody. But God can test you. So the word temptation there comes from the word test. Do not put us into a test. One. Two. That word temptation there means God sometimes can allow you, okay, the devil to tempt you. Are you, are you understanding? Now, the word tempted there and uh, the word tested there, it is the same word which means to be tried. To suffer severely. Ah, now, I, I want to show you something here. When somebody says, I, I was tested. Okay? What the Bible here is talking about is do not allow me to suffer. In short, do not allow me to fall into some problems. Okay, now let's just look at the case study of Job. Now, Job was a man who was tempted. How? He lost all his properties, all what he had, his life, his wife, everything he had. He lost everything. All his ten children, uh, uh, um, he had a, a problem. And now watch this. What happened to Job? It was, he was tempted. Now, there are so many temptations ahead of you waiting for you. The problem is, we wait for them to come. And when they come, when we are already in them, that's going to begin to make a prayer. Oh Lord, deliver my marriage. Oh Lord, deliver this. The issue is, you can actually proactively, preemptively make a prayer to divert the test ahead of you, the temptation ahead of you. Do not lead us. We're going to do something. Any trap ahead must be proactively, preemptively diverted. It sounds so cheap. As I'm teaching to you like this, it sounds so easy. Like, ah, what, what, what is Papa saying? Because you have not yet gone into it. But it's coming. You would wish you were so serious. Like, oh, I wish that day when my father was teaching, when the prophet was, I wish I was so serious. I could have canceled this. But trust you me. Trust you me. The reason why, even if it comes, can you imagine Jesus? He went upon the mountain to pray. And he, he went with the disciples. And they were sleeping. He says, pray that you may not enter into temptation. The temptation there was trouble. I so much believe if Jesus did not make that prayer on that mountain with the disciples, they could be killed right there. Trust you me. Right there on the spot, they could be killed. The Bible says when, when they asked him to say, uh, he asked them a question. He said, who are you looking for? They said, we're looking for Jesus. The Bible says when they said Jesus, they all fell down. The power of prayer before the temptation. Who are you looking for? No, I'm mentioning your name. Who are you looking for? You see, even how you're talking your name. The devil is like this one. <laughs> I'm asking, speak louder. Who are you looking for? Just that. The fact that they are looking for you. The moment they mention your name in their camps, whether the demonic camps or in the office or some, wherever they mention your name, there must be a collapse of the system. The falling of the system. By, because of what? Prayer before the temptation. So Jesus makes a prayer. Please, I want you to hear me very well. Hear me very well. Do not wait for the devil to come in and have control of your life, your property, your spirit, your faith, 
and then begin to pray to say, God, I'm praying. Oh, Lord God, I'm praying that I, I walk out, Lord. I'm praying, Lord. You could have done it. But the problem is this prayer is ignored. It is the most ignored prayer by the church. But Jesus, he gave it. He said, do this and you, you're going to have success. So when you meet a temptation like this, you walk through it. Jesus wasn't even uh, 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 worried about it at all. He was going on the cross knowing I already prayed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He was being tried by King Herod. He knew I already prayed. He was facing a Pontius Pilate. He knew I was in prayer. He went on the cross. Nails were coming everywhere. He knew I already prayed. And he actually gladly said to, to, to God, I commit my spirit in your hands. And he resurrected because he prayed. But the problem is, we wait for, uh, for, for problems to come for us to pray them out. It is wrong. My message is the second uh, uh, statement on the same verse. Then the Bible says, deliver us from evil. Why? Then there's a reason. Only on deliverance. You, you didn't hear me. Only on deliverance, on all reasons. Can you imagine our Father who art in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. There is no reason. Thy kingdom come. There's no reason. Give us today our daily bread. There's no reason. But the moment he says, deliver us from evil, then he, begins, he gives reasons why he must deliver us from evil. He says, for thine, because yours. Look, look at the scripture. He says, because yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Deliver us from evil because yours is the kingdom, is the power and the glory. Uh, you didn't hear me. So when we deal with the deliverance, are you understanding what I'm trying to say to you? When we deal with the topic of deliverance, it is not because we're just talking about deliverance. No, we're speaking because there is the evil one. And because there's the evil one, we need God to deliver us from him. Why? Because God would use his power. God would use his kingdom. And he would use his glory. So what happens when deliverance is taking place? Something is going to happen in your spirit. Listen to me. I want to repeat this statement. I made this statement in January this year. I want to repeat this statement to you. Hear me. The biggest deliverance is not when God breaks your evil foundation. The biggest deliverance is not when demons come out of you. The biggest deliverance in your life, it is not when every satanic bondage is broken. Or when witchcraft powers are broken. The biggest deliverance is when your mind, your mind, your mind receives deliverance. There are so many people who have no demons, but their mind is corrupted. They even begin to question. Do you know, do you know Moses took them out of Egypt and they're on their way to, to Canaan. On their way, they began to question Moses. Somebody who took them out, they began to question, is this even true? Is this, is this even true? Is this even true? And the Bible says, they reached a the level of saying to, to Moses, I said, Moses, can we challenge each other? Can we know who is powerful between you and us? Kola, Datan, all those guys. They say, let's challenge. Can you imagine your congregation to reach the level of saying, can we, Papa, can we challenge? <laughs> now, Moses went through things. If you think you've gone through a lot of things, you're joking. <laughs> Moses had to deal with his congregation. 
Do you know why? Because the biggest deliverance. That's why Jesus said you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Because the biggest problem and challenge we have is in our mind. Now, let me show you something on deliverance. We have a very uh, 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 big problem on deliverance. People think deliverance is when demons are inside of you and the prophet says, demons, come out. Hey, that is the lowest level of deliverance. The highest level of deliverance happens in our mind. The Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and what? And the powers. Then it says, pulling down every what? And every mind or ev any imagination that exalts itself. So can you imagine your mind, your imagination, they have been powered put together in the same level of powers and principalities. Can you imagine that your own imagination, your own thinking, has been put on the same level with the powers of darkness? So the Bible says there's a moment where you must put down your imagination. Because the devil may be telling you that, look now, look what you're going through, this and that, and, and it will come like you're thinking, and he'll begin to threaten you, and begin to show you future that is closed and doomed. And he says, you see, you see here, yeah, you see that, you see that. That is what you need to pull down. You are dealing with a principality. You are dealing with a power. You are dealing with something, a ruler. You must say the name of Jesus. You see, the Bible says that imagination, it is against the knowledge of God. Because the knowledge of God of you is that you are a successful woman. The knowledge of God of you is that you are healed. The knowledge of God of you is that you are a great person. The knowledge of God of you is that you are a mighty man of valor. But the knowledge of your mind is that you are a weakest. The knowledge of your mind is that you are the poorest. You are a nobody. You are a nothing. So you have a lot to pull down. So people think deliverance is going to say out. This is why so many women and so many men, I have commanded demons out of their lives. And when they received deliverance, when they went back home, their mind didn't change. Their mind didn't change. Their mindset didn't change. There was one particular man that Jesus healed upon the pool of Bethsaida. And when he was healed, he went away. And Jesus followed him. He followed him. His mind didn't change. He said, hey. He said, hey, who healed you? He said, I don't know. He didn't even know who healed him. <laughs> he didn't even know who healed him. So the Bible says, pray in this way. Deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. So we have people who think demons, oh, I have no demons. Papa, I have no, me. I, I don't need deliverance. I have no demons. Listen, yeah, you have no demons, but you have got something that is in the same level with powers and the principalities. Your mind, your own mind has become a stronghold. You don't see light. So he said, deliver us from evil. Deliver us. So this prayer has been ignored. And who is Jesus saying to? I heard people saying, you know, you don't need deliverance when you have Jesus. You don't need deliverance. Wait a minute. Do you know this prayer Jesus was teaching his own disciples who were with him? Are you aware? Jesus was teaching his own apostles. You mean you are better than Peter? And he's teaching them. He says, your prayer, pray preemptively. Preemptive prayer strike. Praying before an event. Not waiting uh, 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 until trouble comes and then you say, like, I need a prayer now. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord Almighty, help me. It doesn't work. 
I want us to pray that that evil must not happen. God must deliver you from every demonic evil. Your amen is not moving God. I say your amen is not moving in the heavens. Shout a loud amen. Amen. Say, oh Lord, deliver me from evil. Deliver me from evil. Say it again. Say, deliver me from evil. It is important. Don't wait for the enemy. Don't wait for the enemy. Have you noticed that we wait for trouble to come? What was the reason? When Jesus was born, the first thing they did was to take him into the temple. To pray for Jesus as a baby. Do you know we have so many parents who are struggling with their children today? Because they did not make prayers. Serious prayers for their children. Until their children went into trouble. That's when they say, Papa, pray for my child. My child is drinking. My child is doing this. My child is doing that. If they made those prayers prior, the story could be different. Do not allow evil to come. Now all things are moving well at your workplace. You're working and everything is okay. Until next week they tell you a very bad news. We need to intercept it. Right now, everything is okay with your wife until she goes to the hospital and they say she has cancer. Everything is okay with your husband until they tell you that your husband is so sick or he has been involved in a car accident and has died. That's going to be running up and down. Jesus told us already a password. He said, when you make a prayer, pray that God should deliver you from evil. Before evil comes, pray that he must not allow you to be tempted. Before the temptation comes. Why do we allow these things to be happening? The Lord wants to do something for you. But the problem is, whenever God puts up a mark for you, whenever God puts up a mark for you to say, I need this to happen in July for this lady or for this man, What happens before the good things happen? Evil comes in. And God is not to be blamed because you did not pray for that evil to be stopped. And that's not God's responsibility. When the disciples were with Jesus, it would be like, oh, uh, we are with Jesus. It is Jesus' responsibility to pray for us and to deliver us. So, by the way, we can sleep. Jesus said he doesn't go in that way. He said you have to wake up and pray. You want bank on my prayer. You want bank on my prayer. Peter didn't listen. If Jesus didn't pray, they were killing Jesus on the spot. Peter didn't pray. Few hours from that moment, Peter was denying Jesus. Peter was denying Jesus. He ignored the prayer which Jesus said. And he even told them, he said, pray that you enter not into temptation. I'm here to speak to you. If you're watching me anywhere in the world, you're watching me now, I want to say to you, do not ignore this prayer. Pray in advance. 